special thanks to Patreon supporter Godspeed for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, here to if we're here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the M1150 Assault Breacher. The M1150 Assault Breacher vehicle is a US military mine and explosive clearing vehicle based on the M1 Abrams chassis, equipped with a mine plow and line charges. Its first large scale use by US Marines was in the joint ISAF Afghan Operation Mostark in southern Afghanistan during the war in Afghanistan in 2010 against the Taliban insurgency. These track combat vehicles were especially designed to clear pathways for troops and other vehicles through minefields and along roadside bombs and improvised explosive devices. The 72-ton, 40-foot long vehicles are based on the M1 Abrams with a 1500 horsepower engine but fitted with a 50 caliber machine gun and a front-mounted 4.5 meter wide plow, supported by metallic skis that glide on the dirt and armed with nearly 7,000 pounds of explosives. They are equipped with linear demolition charge systems, rockets carrying C4 explosives up to 100 to 150 yards forward, detonating hidden bombs at a safe distance so that troops and vehicles can pass through safely. In 1990s, the US Army decided it could not afford to continue developing complicated maintenance heavy vehicles for this purpose. The Grizzly program was cancelled in 2001, and the prototype developed never made it to production lines. The Marine Corps, however, persisted that and funded its own development and testing. The main body of the final model of the ABAV is built on the General Dynamics chassis that is used for the M1A1 uh, Abrams main battle tank. Pearson Engineering of the UK provided the specially designed plow and other mine clearing accessories. Um, so yeah, the M1150 Assault Breacher here, a pretty r r cool looking uh, version of the um, M1 Abrams, uh, basically a uh, mine clearing vehicle. I mean, there's really not much to it. It's uh, pretty straightforward in its general nature, but is a uh, overall really cool design and will make an awesome addition to any of your uh, maps where you want a kind of a cool convoy or something and this tank here taking charge and clearing out um, possible IEDs and stuff like that um, that uh, could pose a threat to the convoy. Before we go ahead and uh, move into taking a look at this vehicle, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Godspeed for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go ahead and put a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and it's really, really appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in here to take a look at the M1150 Assault Breacher. So going ahead and moving into it, we have the front plow up here with those skis that I mentioned earlier. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff with that, nothing too crazy, but a lot of good detail in this with uh, all the supports and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff there in the front. Uh, but overall, really nice design for that plow. It looks really cool. Behind this, we have the uh, Abrams. So we get into the turret. As you can see here, it is turretless. It does have a bit more armor beefed around the... Uh, front of the turret, which makes sense, obviously, for possible explosions going off in the front. You definitely want to give a little bit more um, protection there for the front crew. Uh, we then have the 50 caliber machine gun, which is mounted kind of center line in the turret to give a little bit of a point defense capability. And we also have uh, these doors here that would uh, open up on the model and be able to actually shoot out the rocket um, with that uh, the C4 charges in that uh, rope so uh, kind of a cool uh, design there on the side here we have uh, some spare tracks there mounted on the side using a road wheel um, and that's pretty much that and obviously all the communication equipment like that surrounding the vehicle on the back side here we have uh, basically more equipment just mounted onto the back of the vehicle and if you remember back to our one striker tutorial that was designed to be a mine clearing vehicle we actually have a um, similar thing here with the uh, this little launcher that's able to launch posts down in the ground and can actually make mark uh, safe roadways or pathways for uh, ground vehicles to follow and infantry. So pretty cool little uh, design there for that and that uh, is on both sides there of the um, vehicle. But yeah, pretty cool uh, vehicle overall and should make an awesome addition, especially if you're building some sort of um, Middle Eastern type map where IEDs and you know roadside bombs are definitely something that's more common uh, compared to other um, 
you know places and stuff like that or warfare uh but yeah this vehicle here will make an awesome addition for those scenarios anyways so without further ado let's go and move into the tutorial but beginning with our first layer layer number one all right guys so moving into our first layer we have layer number one for layer one to go ahead and get started with here we're going to begin with by building the tank chassis itself we're going to place down two narrow brick slabs like this followed by two narrow brick top slabs and then going back from these we're going to place down two uh black shortcut boxes back to back like so after we have that done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of two of dark oak wood trapdoors, another set of two black shulker boxes back to back. Then we're going to place down two uh, polished blocks and stairs like this, and a second set right behind it. So those two sets there. We're going to place down another set of black shulker boxes like that going across sideways. Again, our two polished black stone stairs like that on both sides, or two sets there. Our black shulker boxes on their sides like that. And then again, our polished black stone stairs like that going across at this point we're going to go then grab ourselves some narrow brick stairs and on the back here we're going to go and place down a row of two of narrow brick ups and down stairs to the side of the shortcut boxes we're going to place down item frames in those item frames we're going to place down some yellow stained glass panes and we then also if you're on java we're going to place down a birchwood button on the side of those shortcut boxes as well now just note that if you are on a different version other than java you will not be able to place down a button and item frame in the same block space if that's the case just go ahead and disregard the button and place down the item frame and basically uh, move forward with the uh, tutorial as the, uh, the buttons there's just a little bit of extra detail continuing on though we're going to go and take our sandstone top side we're going to go ahead and go off this row of black shulker boxes here we're going to place down a row of three over and we want to go then go back to the rear of the vehicle we're going to go to this stair here we're going to place down three sandstone top slabs over from that we then want to fill the space in between our rows of sandstone top slabs like this and once we have this all filled in on the back here, in the center, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate and open it toward the front of the vehicle, like so. We're going to go then grab our stairs. We're going to do the same thing over here to the right side and that we did over on the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit quicker as I've already kind of covered in detail how to do the other side. So it's the same exact thing. And you'll just be going ahead and basically doing what we did before. So I'm just going to go ahead and again speed run this as there's no point in uh, going in a lot of detail for it. And just like that, we have those row wheels done and the tracks on the right side done. At this point in time, we're going to now move up into the plow section here of the build. So this is going to involve uh, some more materials here. We're going to need some sandstone slabs, some birchwood fence gates, some skeleton skulls, and that's what we're going to need kind of for the most part here to go ahead and get started. Also, we'll go ahead and take the time to grab some polished anisite slabs. Um, but yeah, to go ahead and get started here for these plows. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to place down a sandstone top slab here in the middle. We're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate going forward and one more forward like so. And then two fence gates on this side. We're also going to place down a fence gate here in the middle and connect it up to that sandstone top slab. After we have that done, uh, we're going to place down a sandstone top slab coming off that fence gate. And then we're going to place down an additional one forward. And we want to have a total of one, two, three um, going forward. So three and then a polished inside top slab. So we have one, two, three, and then a polished inside top slab like so. Um, after that's all done, actually, sorry, my bit's gonna be one more. So it's gonna be four actually forward and then a polished inside top slab. So like that going forward like so. After that's done, we wanna go and then place down a row of birchwood fence gates going toward the front. And this is gonna be a row of uh, four, it looks like as well. So we're gonna go and do one, two, three, four. Along the sides and over here, one, two, three, and four, and uh, it's actually going to be five, so it's going to be, no, sorry, my bad, four, and then it's going to be a polished inside top seven in the ends, so kind of confusing myself there with uh, having those virtual fence gates go a little bit more, but it should be four, and then it's polished inside top sabs. After that, we're going to place down a sandstone top sab like this coming off this middle fence gate, or, or this uh, fence gate on the sides there. We're going to go then place down two skeleton skulls like this coming off the slab, like that, and then another sandstone top sab. Like so, coming off those skeleton skulls. After we have that done, we're going to then place down a polished anisite top slab on the side of this uh, slab here. Same thing over here. And then we're going to place down two top slabs, one coming off the slab, and then one going toward the middle here to connect us up to the center there, like so. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods. We're going to place down one end rod here, two end rods, three, two, one. Like that, going across there for that plow. Now at this point, uh, that right there is pretty much it for that. And we're going to go ahead and now move into these little uh, kind of, I guess, guides or little uh, skis that are located here in the front. Now for our front one here, we're going to place down a 
birchwood stair coming off that middle end rod, and then a birchwood slab going forward, and then a birchwood slime coming off that slab. We then want to go ahead and skip a space of two out to the side, so one, two, and our third block here, we're going to place down birchwood stair, slab, and again our sign. And the same thing will be done over here on this side. So just like this, to both sides there. And once we have that all done, I believe that is pretty much it for this layer. Just try and double check and make sure we're not missing anything. And everything does appear to be good to go. So that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer 1 of the build. Uh, we'll go ahead and take some time now to go ahead and grab some banner materials, which we'll be using to make our wheels here a little bit more detailed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials to make those banners, and I'll see you guys here shortly. So going ahead and moving into making these banners, they're really simple to make. We're going to need some black banners, some yellow dye, and or sorry, two black banners, two yellow dye, and four black dye to be specific. We're going to go and start off by going ahead and going into our loom. We're going to place down our black banner and our yellow dye. We're going to split each of these banners in half. So we're going to have yellow on the left side for one banner, and then yellow on the right side for the other banner. So we get two banners like so. Both these banners will be placed back into our loom, and we're going to go and select the uh, line across the top, or rather, we're going to go and do the um, line going through the center. Uh, just like this. So line through the center and I'll create that banner and we're going to also do the same thing here Line through the center there for that one and actually you only need two black dye. So my bad on that one um, Over kind of over counted there, but basically uh, you're gonna place these iron frame or these banners now like this on the sides there of those Polished black stone stairs with the yellow portion facing toward each other And this right here will just kind of create a nice overall look for the wheels and kind of helps spruce them up a little bit uh, for the build Anyways though, that right there will conclude what we have there for layer 1 fully, and with that let's move on to layer number 2. Moving on to our next layer, we move it into layer number 2. For layer 2 to get started with here, we're going to place down two narrow brick stairs on top of these two narrow brick top slabs. In between those stairs, we're going to place down a row of three of sandstone upside down stairs. After that's done, we want to go ahead and take our smooth sandstone, we're going to place down a row of five going across here like so, followed by a, um, actually sorry, it's just going to be a row of seven all the way across. We're going to then do a second row going across, followed by three. And then we're going to go and do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven rows of seven going all the way across here. On the end of these rows, we're going to place down birchwood trapdoors, and we're going to go and close the trapdoors like so, so they lay flat against the sides of the tank. And same thing will be done over here. So just like that. And then at this point, we're also going to go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the side of these narrow brick stairs here on the front. After that, going to the rear here, we're going to place down a row of five of smooth sandstone across. We're going to then place down a sandstone upside down stair to both sides and a birchwood sign on the sides here of those sandstone slabs. After that, we're going to then place down a row of five of smooth sandstone across again the center, then a birchwood uh, log on its side to both sides. We're going to place down an iron frame and then a cobweb in the iron frame on both sides of the log. And if you're on Java, we'll also take the time to place a birchwood button on the side of that block as well for that extra bit of detail. After that, going ahead and moving to the back, we're going to place down two narrow brick ups downstairs on both sides. In the space in between them, we're going to place down a row of... Uh, Three of upside down, or sorry, actually one smooth sandstone upside down stair to both sides, a smooth sandstone block in the center, and then coming off that center block, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone slab. We're also going to place down birchwood signs on the sides here of these, or I should say the fronts here of these narrow brick upside down stairs, like so. With that all complete though, that is going to uh, wrap up the chassis, and let's go ahead and start working our way up here to the front. So for this front section here, we're going to place down a birchwood upside down stair on top of these two outer narrow brick stairs. We're going to place down an iron frame on the side. And then a smooth sandstone block in the inner frame. Same thing over here on this side. If you're on Java, we'll also place a birchwood sign on the side of that stair. Same thing as the buttons. This placing of the sign will only be available for Java players. And actually, this is going to be moved one in. So we're actually going to go and move these stairs one more block inwards. Uh, my apologies on that one. So just go ahead and move them forward or move them toward the inside here. One more. And then they'll be good to go. So just like that. Now after that's done, we want to go and then place down a birchwood fence gate coming off both sides here of these stairs. And we're going to have the fence gate opened up toward those stairs. Then in the space between the fence gates, we're going to place down an end rod. And then a sandstone slab going forward from the end rod. After we have that done, we want to go and then place down another end rod coming off that sandstone slab. 
And after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone wall. Come off that sandstone slab. Continuing on, uh, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three andesite walls. Then we're going to place down one, two, and then one here to the side. Same thing over here, one, two, one. And then one polished andesite slab coming off the side there of that wall on the outer sides, like so. We then want to place down a redstone repeater on top of this smooth sandstone block. We're going to go and separate the notches like so to both sides. We also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some um, skeleton skulls. And we're going to place down skeleton skulls here on top of these two birchwood fence gates. Coming off those skeleton skulls, we're going to place down an end rod going forward. And we then want to place down a skeleton skull, which will be on these two fence gates right here as well toward the front once that's done uh, we then want to place down a fence gate that'll be coming off this inset wall and opened up toward it like that to both sides and just double checking everything to make sure everything is good to go everything does appear to be good to go for the front here all that detailing is complete uh, the one thing we do have to do though is to take some andesite or sorry some sandstone walls and we're just going to place them on top of these birchwood stairs with that all done, that is going to wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number two. Here is a top-down view of what it should look like for the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number five, four, sorry, three. Jeez. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to get started with here, we're going to start with the front of the tank here. We're going to place down a uh, virtual pressure plate here in the center, then a lever like this to both sides. On top of that narrow brick stair, we're going to place down an anvil to both sides. And we then want to place down a skeleton skull coming off those anvils like so. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and also grab a birchwood trapdoor and place it down on top of these narrow brick stairs. Then behind these narrow brick stairs, we're going to go ahead and grab some um, birchwood slabs. We're going to place down one, two birchwood slabs and then a second row of two going back. Same thing over here on this side as well. Then in the space between those birchwood slabs, we're going to place down a row of sandstone slabs. So one, two, three. And then coming off those slabs, we're going to place down one, two, three birchwood trapdoors going forward as well. After that's all done, we're going to then place down a row of seven of birchwood slabs going all the way across. Uh, we then want to place down a birchwood slab here in the center, and then a smooth sandstone block to both sides of it, like so. Then after we have those smooth sandstone blocks placed, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone stair coming off of it. So like this, to both sides, and then a smooth sandstone slab. We're going to then take our smooth sandstone, place down one, two, three, four, five, six, going all the way across. Then a sandstone slab to, or sorry, it should be only five across, and then a sandstone slab on both sides there. We're going to go then do the same row again. So five sandstone full blocks across, sandstone slab to both ends. Then we're going to place down a row of seven of smooth sandstone across, a second row, then a third row, a fourth row. A fifth row, six, seven, and eight, going all the way across like that. So eight rows of seven going across. For the side detailing, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a trip bar hook, come off this first block. Then we're going to place down a sign, followed by a button, then a sign, then a trip bar hook, then a sign, then a button, and then a trip bar hook here on the end. After that, over here on this side, we're going to do the same thing. Birchwood sign, trip bar hook, birchwood sign, button, birchwood sign, trip bar hook, birchwood sign, and actually my bad. It should be forward one, so I accidentally did this a little offset, so we're just going to go ahead and adjust this real quick. But yeah, same thing as we did on the other side will be done over here on this side. So just like that. And after we have that done, also on the back here, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three black concrete, and then two smooth sandstone. We're going to place down a trip bar hook on both ends like so. We also want to go ahead and place down a row of ladders going across those five blocks like that. Also on the bottom here from the previous layer, uh, we're going to go and grab an item frame and some trip bar hooks. We're going to place down a trip bar hook in an item frame on these two stairs here. Rotate them so that the uh, trip our hook is facing downwards like so and once we have that all done uh that's pretty much it for our chassis for this time being we're gonna go ahead and now move up to our um front plow here to go ahead and expand upon this we're gonna go ahead and start off by placing down an end rod on top of these two stairs here so just like that going up then we want to go ahead and place down a 
birchwood fence gate that'll be on top of these fence gates so one right here going up opened up toward the front here one right here opened up toward the front as well we're gonna go then grab some uh we're gonna go ahead first grab some sandstone stairs we're gonna place down a sandstone stair on top of this wall here and then going forward from it we're gonna place down a sandstone top slab we then want to place down a ladder or sorry an iron bar like this then one going back then one and two to the side here one back and then one to the side same thing will be done over here one here one back then one two to the side one back and then one to the side there like that we then want to go ahead and go forward from the slab with a another slab like this and then we're going to place down a trap door here on the very end for the forward one so just like that then after that we're going to then place down a sandstone stair which will be on top of this block here or this wall the both sides and we're going to go and then place down a lever directly behind it also at this point in time on the bottom of this slab here we're going to place down a lever and we're going to have it facing forward toward that sandstone wall there with uh, that all complete that is going to wrap up everything we have here for this layer just double checking to make sure we're not missing anything for the front section especially and everything does appear to be good to go uh, we can also place down a birchwood sign here on the side of this sandstone block as well so we'll go and put that on like that Anyways, so that right there is going to conclude layer number three. Here's what it looks like from up above. And with that, we'll be moving into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to go and place down a birchwood trapdoor on top of these iron trap or these uh, anvils. So just like this to both sides. And then going forward from it, we're going to place down an item frame, coming off those um, trapdoors. And we're going to then place down a snowball in those item frames like that for the front headlights. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then go and continue on with the back of the tank here. We're going to go and grab ourselves some end stone bricks and some end stone walls. We're going to place down an end stone brick here on top of the slab and then the end stone stair to both sides of that block like so. After that, we're going to go then place down a row of three of blocks directly behind this. And we're going to go then grab a sand, or sorry, actually it's going to be a row of five, my bad. And then we're going to go and grab skeleton schools and wrap around these corner blocks like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a second uh, end stone block coming back on both sides and we can fill the space in the middle here with smooth sandstone. And we're going to go ahead and place down a end stone brick wall on both ends. We then want to place down two more end stone brick blocks going back on both sides here and then we can just fill in again the space in between those blocks with two rows of five of smooth sandstone. We then want to place down a row of seven as we see it's done across, followed by a row of a second row of seven going across as well. We're gonna go then grab our sandstone upside down stairs and we're gonna place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven upside down stairs across, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven smooth sandstone top slabs. On the sides here, we're gonna place down two birchwood signs coming off those two slabs there. So just like that, or in the stairs also. And we also want to go ahead and grab skeleton skulls and we're going to place them on the sides here of these two blocks like that. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and then grab our uh, black shulker box. We're going to place down a black shulker box coming off this sandstone block. Followed by an item frame on the side here, a yellow stained glass pane in the item frame, and then a virtual button there on the side to go ahead and make that um, extra road reel. And same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So same material and same design like that. With that all complete, going ahead and continuing on, uh, we're going to go to the back section here now. We're going to take our sandstone uh, full blocks and we're going to place down a row of seven going all the way across. After that row of seven, we're going to then place down a row of seven of smooth sandstone slabs. We're going to then place down a birchwood fence gate coming off both sides of this smooth sandstone block, or that row of seven smooth sandstone blocks. And at this point here, we start to get into a little bit of a difference. On the right side here to begin with, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate here, open it toward the side, and we're going to go and then place down a birchwood sign coming off the side of that fence gate. Then going back from that, we're going to place down a daylight detector, a item frame, and in that daylight detector, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a red concrete block, and we're going to place it down in the item frame like so, with a birchwood sign on the side of that or of that daylight detector if you're on Java. Same thing will be done over here on this corner, so daylight detector, item frame, red concrete, and birchwood sign like so, if available. And we're also going to do the same thing here with our fence gate, so birchwood fence gate, which we opened up toward the outside and then a birchwood sign on the side there of it like so. For the space in the middle here, we're going to place down um, one and two sandstone stairs like that. Going across and actually, sorry, my bad, it's going to be a sandstone stair like so. 
and then one coming off like so and then a sandstone top slab or half slab here and then another sandstone stair like that and another one facing it like so and we'll do the same thing going back one more time so like that and that right there will basically bring it just to the back there we want to go and then place down a birchwood trap door on the side of this stair this slab this stair here and then levers that will be facing toward these sandstone stairs and with that all complete there we're also going to go ahead and move to the sides and if you do want to add these little kind of post markers or whatever uh roadway markers we're going to place down a stripped birchwood log to both sides we're going to go ahead and wrap item frames around the sides that we can for the strip birchwood just note that we have the item frame inside right here so if you're on a different version you will not be able to place those um in the same block space and then in those item frames we're just going to place down um iron bars so just like that on both sides there like so and also on the bottom here again for us travel players we're going to place down an item frame and we're going to then place down a black concrete block in the item frame for the hole where those posts shoot out anyways though that right there is going to conclude what we have there for uh layer number or for the i should say for the main structure and at this point in time we're going to go and now move to this section here so this section we're going to start off by placing a sandstone stair on top of this fence gate here and over here on the same thing we're going to then place down a lever coming off the back of the stairs and then on coming off those levers we're going to place down a smooth sandstone top slab to both sides and then a sandstone slab on top of those levers like so we also want to go and take a virtual button we're going to place down a virtual button on the top here these two top slabs on both sides and then a sandstone slab will also go on top of these levers since it's only one slab and that will pretty much conclude that uh, top layer and with that kind of our front plow section and uh, system. Anyways though that right there is going to conclude everything we have for layer number four and with that let's move on to layer number five. Moving into our next layer we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with here we're going to begin with by placing down a sandstone wall which will be going on top of uh, this block right here. We want to go ahead and place down an item frame coming off that sandstone block and in that item frame we're going to place down a black bed like so which we rotate with the pillow facing downwards. After that on both sides of that we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector so like this to both sides. An item frame over here which will be on the right side of the turret so this side here a black concrete block in the item frame and again if you're on java we'll go and take birchwood signs and place them down on the side of that wall and the side of the daylight detector like so after that's done we also want to place down a skeleton skull and that will be on top of this stair right here facing forward and then to the sides we're going to place down a flower pot like that to both sides once we have that done we're going to then place down a sandstone stair here in the middle so just like that in the middle there and then a birchwood slab to both sides and then after that, a daylight detector coming off those birchwood slabs. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down a uh, stripped birchwood log come going behind that stair. And then a smooth sandstone stair to both sides of that log. And then a uh, another birchwood slab coming off the side or the face here of that stair like that to both sides. After that, we're going to then take our sandstone walls. We're going to place down a row of three across this section here. Then we're going to place down a sandstone stair to both sides. And we then want to go ahead and place down a dragon head on top of this block here. So dragon head will be placed on both sides like that. And then coming off the back there of the dragon head, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like so. So just like that. After that, we're going to then place down a row of seven of smooth sandstone across. And then another row of seven going all the way across. Uh, followed by a third row. And then a fourth row going across that space like so. To the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on the second block, and then we're going to place down two birchwood trap doors on the other two rows going back. Same thing over here. Then we have this banner here, which is a black banner with some gray dye making this kind of brick pattern. So it's uh, basically, you'll need one black banner that and a dark gray dye. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to go into your loom, place your black banner, and your gray dye, and you're going to select the brick pattern, which is one of the preset patterns, and you'll permit to get this banner. So I'm not going to go and dive into how to make it in the uh, loom, because I feel it's really self-explanatory self -explanatory for what it is. Anyways, at this point, though, we're going to go then place down a sandstone wall here in the center, and we're going to go then place down a birchwood trapdoor like this to the side there. Come off the birchwood trapdoor and place down a skeleton skull to the side. 
we then want to go ahead and go to the other side here. We're going to place down a sandstone, or sorry, a birchwood trapdoor here and flip that out to the side there as well. And in the center section here, we're actually going to go ahead and delete this smooth sandstone block and replace it with a smooth sandstone slab instead of what we had before. We're going to then also do the same thing over here on this side. So just the same thing with our sandstone walls like that going across there. Then after we have that done, uh, we're going to place down a lever. That will be coming off this center block. And then we're going to go ahead and grab some birchwood um, fence gates and uh, birchwood uh, yeah, fence gates and fence post. And this will be done like this on both sides. And we're going to open the fence gates toward that sandstone wall. After that's all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a birchwood, or sorry, a daylight detector over here on the right side. Then a smooth sandstone slab. And we're going to go then grab ourselves some sandstone walls and we're going to place down a row of three of sandstone walls over. On the left side here, we're going to do basically the same thing. So a birchwood slab and a daylight detector, like so. Our next row is going to be taking our, uh, poly or our stripped birchwood blocks and we're going to place down a row of five going across those five stairs. We're going to place down uh, birchwood trapdoors coming off the three middle blocks and we want to go and then grab some trip bar hooks and place them down coming off these blocks here to both sides. After that we're going to place down one more strip birchwood block going up from those ones on the sides there and then taking our birchwood buttons we're just going to go and wrap birchwood buttons around uh, the sides here of them. So just like so and we'll wrap it around all four sides. Then after we have that all done, that right there is pretty much it. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go. Um, so that right there is pretty much it for what we have there for layer number five. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number six. All right, guys, so moving into our final layers, we're actually going to go ahead and just finish this build off with layer six through nine. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and go to the top of the vehicle here. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five sandstone slabs going back. Then our, or actually, sorry, my bad, it's going to be two going from the front to the back. <clears throat> two, our third one's going to be a birchwood slab, and then our last one's going to be a birchwood slab. And same thing would be done over here. One, two, birchwood slab, birch sandstone slab, birchwood slab. After that's done, we want to take our trap doors. We're going to place down one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Then taking our skeleton skulls, we're going to place down one, two here, one, two, and then over here, same thing, one, two, and one, two, like that across. Also, the middle two blocks here, after the wall, is going to be replaced with two anvils, like so, and then two birchwood buttons going back from that. We're going to go and grab ourselves some end rods and some fence posts. We're going to place down an end rod that will be on top of this wall here, going up two fence posts, so one, two. Then an end rod on top of this anvil, going up two fence posts as well. After that, we're going to go then place down a sandstone wall on top of this lever. And then the end rod. And then we're going to go up two birchwood fence posts like that. Then on the back here, we're going to place down the skeleton skull. Coming off this block here. And we're going to then go up from that with our end rods. Or sorry, our iron bars going up three. So just like that. Then to the sides here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence post on top of the skeleton skull. And then go up from that fence post with three iron bars. Same thing over here. So I forgot to place that, so let's make sure that skeleton skull is on this side as well. And that's going to go up at 3 as well, like that. Once we have that done, we're going to go and grab our birchwood trap doors. We're going to place down a trap door on top of this one. One right here, here, and here, across the back. And also on the top here, we're going to place down 1, 2, and 3 across that section. Then a sandstone wall on top of those strip birchwood blocks there for our um, sides there. And then we're just going to go and wrap signs of birchwood around the walls like so. Just like that. And same thing over here. After that's all complete, uh, we're going to go ahead and now move into a section here, which is going to kind of depend on what version you're on. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of these two fence posts. And we're going to go then place down an end rod that goes across in between them. So kind of a simple technique there. Um, but if you're on Java, we have access to a little bit more of a extreme technique. We're going to place down a block, so we'll go ahead and choose something a little bit color different so we can tell it apart from our structure a little bit better so we'll do some blue here we're gonna place down a block here on top of this um wall and on top of this daylight detector 
same thing will be done on the side. So if you're on Bedrock and Pocket Edition, you'll do this technique on both sides. If you're on Java and have access to what we're going to pull out next, then we'll be going ahead and using that technique. So for us on Java, we're going to go and type in slash give space at p space minecraft colon uh, debug stick underscore stick and this right here is your command. By pressing enter, you'll get this glowing stick. We're going to go and then grab ourselves a lever. We're going to place it down on the sides here of these blocks facing toward the front. And we're going to then left click the lever until we get selected facing. And it should say a direction in parentheses. By right clicking this lever, it will change our its direction. And we want it to be basically like this to both sides here. We're going to go and then left click it again. It should say selected face wall. By right clicking it, it should say face four. And it should face these now to the floor like that with the levers facing inwards. And then we just want to place down an end rod in between those levers like so. And once you have that done, that's it for that little technique right there. And you basically have your two differences there in your sides, depending on what version you're on. With that out of the way, uh, the last thing for us to do is to put the machine gun on. So the machine gun here, you're going to need an anvil, a dark oak wood fence gate, a polished black stone stair, a end rod, a chain, an item frame with a black bed, and a dark oak wood sign. And then for the time being, a redstone repeater. We're going to start off by placing down an anvil on top of the stair here. And then a polished black stone upside down stair going forward from it. Followed by an end rod and then a chain like so. We're going to place down a dark oak fence key here on the back. Open it toward the anvil. Then to the side of the stair, we're going to place down an item frame. A black bed in the item frame rotated sideways. And then a dark oak wood sign there in the item frame like so. Or over the item frame for us Java players. Then on top here, we're going to place down a redstone repeater and separate the notches like that. Then on the other side, we're going to place down a sandstone top slab. So like this. And then we're going to place down a powered rail like that. So it's facing toward the, um, the uh, repeater there. And then we want to go and take some birchwood signs. And we can just wrap it around the top slab. Like so. And once you have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for the M1150 Assault Breacher redesign. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This will be a link from us on the build to link to my channel or this video if this does bring you some use sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to use it for projects you guys are working on over on Enjoy the Build, have fun and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Godspeed for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett24 and I'll see you guys next time.